Let's talk about some of the challenges we had with environmental control, specifically dehumidification and condensation. All right, so here's the deal. One of the biggest challenges with any building like this, whether it be here or on Mars or in space or wherever it's at, it doesn't matter, is the temperature difference or delta T between the outside of the building and the inside of the building. Now, depending on which one is warmer or colder, condensation can form. Condensation is when you have humid air, air that has a water content in it, and that humid air touches a cooler surface. That cooler surface results in a phase change, meaning that heat energy leaves uh, the um, humid air, the gaseous form, and when that energy leaves, the energy is reduced and we get a phase change where it goes down to its lower uh, energy state, or in this case, a liquid. Now, if I add energy to something that's a liquid, it turns into a gas, right? It boils, it evaporates, it, uh, it phase changes. And condensation is the same thing, only it's when we have a, a temperature difference across a surface that's large enough to result in that phase change occurring. For us, living in the northern hemisphere and in the northern latitudes nonetheless, outside of the building can get pretty cool. Even in the middle of the summertime, uh, we could have temperatures well below 65 Fahrenheit, which is the minimum temperature that we want this building to go. Right now, it's a nice, warm 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The uh, heater hasn't ran all day. This is just nice, radiant energy coming in from the sun uh, and keeping us nice and warm. But in the wintertime or at night, when that temperature drops outside and it's warm in here, you get condensation on the inside of the building. Now, this building, if it was designed differently, purpose, if it was more purpose-built for this, uh, you could do things to help control that, but this particular building we chose because of its strength and its height. This is a 22 foot tall building, uh, what is that, a little over 7 meters tall at its peak. It has a very steep roof on it so that when the snow comes, we get a lot of snow. We had snow all the way up to the elbow of the building, which is about 8 feet, uh, two winters ago. Uh, so we need a nice steep roof uh, to be able to move that snow off of. We need a strong building because we get 75 mile per hour winds up here and we need a high building uh, because we need to take advantage of vertical grow space. That's one of our key initiatives here is to make one square foot of land worth two, which means we believe we have to go vertical in order to take advantage of that. We don't want just a flat greenhouse like you see commercial greenhouses where everything's on the floor and you have all this open space above you, which means you don't need a very high greenhouse because that's still taking up one square foot of land equals one square foot of land. We need to go vertical. So that's why we have this building. It also means that we have to deal with condensation. So when I designed the building, I knew about this problem. Uh, I had a few ways that I could deal with it. And what I chose to do is dehumidifiers. So we have two low energy dehumidifiers. They don't take very many amps when they're running. They don't have to run all the time. Uh, in fact, they're not running all the time. This one just happens to be on right now. Uh, there's one on this side of the building and another one on that side of the building. They are cold temperature dehumidifiers. Um, and I, we, we could have done a water reclamation where we have like gutters on the building and we try to capture stuff. That's not a bad idea. It's one of the ones I originally looked at. Um, but it costs a lot to put gutters in and it, this is actually cheaper to do this. Believe it or not, it's cheaper. And what I like about this is that this is essentially prototype water reclamation. We actually uh, return the water into the, the grow beds, uh, let the bacteria do their thing with it, and it's returned back to the fish tank. So we're actually, not only is aquaponics using 90% less water than traditional agriculture, but we're actually capturing it and bringing it back into the system as best we can. In the future, I'd like to replace these types of dehumidifiers with purpose-built water rec reclaimers uh, to where the water is even clean enough to drink so that you could take this system to some place where they have really dirty water. You could use the really dirty water to start with because fish don't really care, not all, most fish anyway. Uh, and then through time, you can essentially just clean the water and provide clean drinking water for folks. Uh, and they put in dirty water, out comes clean water. Way cool thing right there. Uh, challenges though with condensation are that we have to deal with with it happening, period, uh, and mold. So humidity is really important. It's not something that you really want to get, you don't want to get rid of it because 
the plants need it to live. They need humidity. They like it around 50% humidity. Some of them like it even higher than that. But we try to keep this building right around 50% humidity with the two dehumidifiers, the exhaust fan. Uh, even in the winter when we weren't running the exhaust fan as much as it is in the summertime now, um, we were able to keep the system at a nice 50 degrees or 50% humidity. I'm standing right now at this location. It's, it's pretty appropriate here. You can see that seam that's up at the top of the building uh, where the vertical insulation hits the northern uh, ceiling. Now, one of the challenges that I've had is just sealing up everything and keeping it sealed. Um, the, the building itself is not airtight, and this is the windward side, so it gets beat up. And what happens is the whole building starts to move and shake, and this insulation kind of moves with it, shakes with it, and breaks its tape free. Uh, because of that, the back side of this is not fully sealed, meaning that humid air gets up into uh, the northern side of the building. Now in the summertime, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, it's something that you have to keep an eye on because you do get condensation up there, condensation falling onto the Rockwell stuff. Uh, I don't know, I don't, actually don't know. I don't think it's fiberglass. Uh, I should know that, I bought it. There's too many things I bought though, so I'll have to look that one up. Anyway, uh, that water dropping up there, just a perfect condition for mold mildew, but it does have some airflow up there, so uh, we just have to keep an eye on it. Uh, that condensation then rolls down the side of the building and we get water down on the floor that could uh, hurt uh, the structure of the grow beds, the, um, the base, the foundation of all those is negatively impacted when you have water falling down on it. So I think ultimately you really do need some form of a gutter system to kind of catch everything that your water reclaimers aren't going to be catching. It's my banana tree, our banana tree. Just had a new leaf come. There's three leaves in there now. Banana is another type of grass. I don't know all this stuff. I got some brown stuff on here on the side uh, and I'm not a botanist, so I don't know what that at all is. Uh, it looks like, you know, the water, you're not supposed to water these very often. Um, it looks like it might be time to actually water this. Yeah, it does. Looks like it's time to water. So I'll do that today. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on with my topics here, environmental control. Uh, what I want to talk about here is just keeping everything just right. You need the temperature to be just right. You need the humidity to be just right. And you need these systems to keep everything just right if you're going to do year-round growing uh, and you want to keep it easy. You, you essentially, you got to figure out exactly the right place to have everything for what you're growing uh, and then for in our case we're going to be programming the computer right the server has all the logic on it that helps control the systems in here so I haven't plugged the dehumidifiers into automation yet but that's something I'm considering doing so we can control them uh, more they have their own built-in or uh, humidity sensor so I don't really need to plug them into automation but it would be nice to to kind of have them there so the automation is all centrally controlled instead of uh, displaced like that. But either way, just keeping everything perfect is a big challenge. And with the condensation challenge, you know, plants would like more humidity, but if we put more humidity in, we get more condensation. If you get more condensation, you get more mold. If you get more mold, you have more disease, you have more rot, you have more crop loss, you lose plants. So then it really becomes a trade. How many plants do I want to lose because I don't have perfect humidity versus how many plants do I want to lose with mold, mildew, fungus? Now, that one's easy. Mold, mildew, fungus is bad. It's bad for people. It's bad for plants. Uh, it creates a whole host of problems. So it, it's much easier to say, let's reduce humidity. We'll deal with a slower plant growth. It won't be perfect for them. But given all the other things we're balancing, it's the lesser of two weevils. So it's, it's probably appropriate that I finish up here at the um, germination chamber. In the winter time, if you followed us at all for a while, you know we had, a, we had to shut down operations because some black dots that we're having on the plants and we shut everything down, we cleaned out the building, we thought it was mold, uh, fungus problem, and we did a ton of experimentation. And in the end, it wasn't mold, it was actually a, just an unhealthy plant. It was like a pimple on a plant type of problem pimple on a plant type of problem. Uh, say that three times fast. Anyway, so, sorry. Uh, so what we did conclude is it's all about water and temperature. And most importantly, it's about water and temperature when the germination occurs. 
Uh, germination is like having your baby and getting it uh, breast milk and keeping it really nice and healthy. Or if you're raising cattle, it's uh, having that calf come out and get that first taste of colostrum. Uh, it, it's what sets everything else up. And if you don't do it right, it makes other things problematic. Problematic in the sense that you could recover from it, but it's so much easier if you just get the germination right. It creates a stronger plant that's less prone to disease, infection, illnesses, etc., like what we suffered. So we invested the money on a, in a, for a dehumidification or a germination chamber, which is filled with humidity. Here you can see the condensation occurring. It's 70 degrees inside, but it's 80 some odd degrees in here uh, for the seeds to be just really nice and happy, nice and humid environment. Um, the challenge that we have is when the sun comes out, which we have the whole new cover to let the sun in, we want the sun to come in so we get more light, so we use less energy because indoor growing is very energy intensive. So we got this thing helping with one problem, but when that sun comes in and warms this thing up, humidity levels change in here. Uh, the water is more prone to leave uh, rather than stay in here because it's been heated. That heat rises, brings more stuff in here, and this tends to dry out in here. Um, so controlling the environment out here and in here is very difficult. And uh, keeping, keep an eye on this thing is, is very challenging. The peas that we have, they are not doing very well in here uh, right now. So even with a very environmentally controlled unit like this, this is professional. We bought, spared no expense, we, we bought the professional grade germination chamber. Like no more screwing around. This thing is so important. You can build your own. But after the problems that we had, the shutdown that we had, we lost over $3,200 because of the shutdown. I think by the time it was, I'm not even going to say by the time, it was a lot. This thing will pay for itself as long as that never happens again because of this. So this is another big part of the environmental control. While it's not part of the building proper, you know, it is part of the process. And we start our aquaponic plants in here and we start our microgreens in here. So. This is a pretty big deal. So there you go. Uh, that's our challenges for condensation and dehumidifier. Uh, you can't stop physics. Cold and warm, warm air touching cold surface, you get condensation. That's just physics. Uh, you can do chemical things. You can treat the fabrics and stuff like that uh, to help avoid uh, getting condensation, but you're still gonna have it because physics is physics. And uh, that's just how that goes. So. Thanks for following along. Uh, hopefully this informs many of you that are trying to do similar things. I will say this, that the food problem that's coming our way is gonna take everybody helping each other. So uh, hopefully our work here will help some of you out because it's gonna be an all the above solution. We're gonna need everybody's help for what's coming our way. So thanks for following along. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, on, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian, out.